Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Bangim Sikinya, and I am basically that guy whom yesterday Pastor Art came on my wall to comment on my wall. And as a result of that, um, a lot of people got caught wind of um, that conversation and it started trending in WhatsApps and in certain groups and whatever. And um, so, yeah. I am making this video because since last night, between last night and today, I've spent hours on the phone with different people. Last night alone, I spent four hours on the phone with three different friends who phoned me. Last night surprised me because um, two of those friends that phoned me last night, one is in Cape Town and one is in Joburg. So for that post to have reached people that far um was it, it, it was a big notification that this thing got pretty deep into the church into um uh, to a lot of people in the church the church being crc that is led by pastor art and um then this morning again um i got uh three calls and from three different friends, all of these calls range anything between 30 and one hour long, 30 minutes and an hour long. And so I find myself having to deal hours upon hours with this situation and explaining what is going on. And on Facebook as well, bombarded, completely flooded with a lot of people coming on. Since past art came on my wall, a lot of CRC members come on my wall to have their say. And I say CRC members because that's what they claim to be. I can't confirm or deny that, but that's what they call themselves. They say they're members of the CRC church, uh, of CRC. So, um, I am actually going to respond to all of that. And I'm going to say the same things that I've been saying to all my friends that have been calling me. And um, this is basically it. I don't agree with pastor art i'm i'm surprised i was actually shocked as much as everybody is shocked to read my comments but i was as shocked as everybody else that he actually had the time to find me and uh, come and comment on my wall and right after that he obviously opened uh, that obviously opened the floodgates where hundreds of people if not thousands of people um are coming on my wall and so, that first things first, I myself was as surprised as everybody else. Because in the bigger scheme of things, I'm really just a nobody. I'm just somebody like everybody who comments on things that are happening in their society. I'm from Bloemfontein. And in my society, there is a church called CRC. There are churches called ZCC. There are churches called uh, Methodist. There, there, there are, there's everything that you find in any other society. And I'll comment on those things. There are celebrities, there's a soccer team, there's a rugby team. You'll comment on everything. And Pastor Art uh, or CRC is part of those things that we'll comment on, especially if the things that he says or does have a direct impact on me. Everything else that he says and does, if it doesn't impact me, really is none of my business. I keep it moving. But if the, some of the things he does have a direct impact on me, um, then I will have an opinion on them and I will put my opinion out. I find it problematic that if my opinion does not sit well with other people, they don't care what my opinion is. What they care about is me not talk talking about my opinion. And um, that happened a lot on my on my Facebook. And my opinion is this, and it is what I was trying to have a chat with him about when he was there for a brief, I think, 20, 30 minutes on my wall, um, was him and his consistent remarks on my ancestors being demons and he consistently keep kept saying those things i've been going to crc from the year 2000 and the last time i set foot in that church was in two years ago 2018 and consistently throughout those years pastor art has has been making remarks about our ancestors being um demons and we worship in demons and I asked him about that. Like, why do you call our ancestors demons? What gives you the authority to call our ancestors demons? And he denied it. And he quoted, he denied ever saying that. And he quoted um, a, a passage from the book of Luke, which says, actually, when people are dead, they're dead. There's no ways of communicating with them. You can only communicate to God through Jesus. And everything else that is not aligned to that, he does not believe in. And that is my problem with him. Like, if you don't believe it, 
then just say you don't believe it. Do not go and extend and call it demons, you know, which he has done, which he has said on a number of times in the past 18 years that I've been going to his church. I've heard him a number of times referring to our ancestors as demons. And um, so he, he claims that he's never said that. So I guess it's my word against his. But what's interesting is there's a lot of people that actually come out and say, but we've heard you say that. So it's not a bangy thing. A lot of people come out and say, I've stopped going to that church because he consistently keeps referring to our ancestors as demons. Now, the interesting part is some of the people that agree with him came on and actually emphasized that, yes, in fact, if you are um, communicating with your ancestors, you are, that is demon or demon worshiping. And uh, guys, because you don't understand the context on which other people practice their faith, does not allow you to give them names. You see, my problem with that is, it's okay to disagree with people who uh, pray to God through their ancestors. If you don't believe in that, it's okay. But to go and extend a title to it and call them demons, that is incredibly offensive. And that is, it is rooted in a lot of racism as well. Because I'm standing here and I'm, th I'm an extension of my ancestors. I really am. I don't care what anybody says. You can say whatever you want to say. I'm an extension of my ancestors. They gave birth to me. And if those people are demons, essentially, you're telling me I'm a demon. Because demons give birth to demons. Snakes give birth to snakes. People give birth to people. And my ancestors pass and move on into the spiritual world. And I believe I can uh, have a relationship with them spiritually then you call them demons and I'm supposed to be okay with that. And when I call you out for that, your, your, your supporters come and they say, you are in fact right. I am worshiping demons. So as I stand in front of you, you actually see an extension of a demon. So now I'm being belittled to being a demon as a human being. And I'm not allowed to say that I had strongly object to that. I, I, I'm, I'm so offended by that. And there are people that came on the wall and uh, made good good debates, such as Sean. Um, Sean Gordy, I, I forgot the surname. But um, like those are the only people I was really interested in, in responding to because I know Sean. Not entirely, but I grew up with him. We're in close proximity enough for me to understand that he's not emotional or he's not getting personal or whatever. Uh, he's really interested in conversating. So I understand him enough for me to actually want to respond to him. And be like, Sean, you made a suggestion that why didn't I speak to the pastors in the church? And having it spent that many years in the church, um, I got to understand the culture of the church. And I can safely tell you that it would have been a waste of my time to go to a pastor and tell him, listen, I need to get to Pastor Art or I need you to get this message to Pastor Art that I feel that he's being very racist. Because Pastor Art gets on the podium every single week and he defends his racism. So here I come and I say again, this is very racist. And I expect a pastor to go tell, uh, a junior pastor to go tell pastor out that it's going to be a waste of my time. More especially given the fact that the junior pastors actually agree with him that our ancestors are demons. As we have seen on my wall, they came on and they confirmed that yes, indeed, my ancestors, my ancestors are demons. These are not words I'm accusing people of, of saying. These are words that people willingly say themselves. So it, it would have been a waste of my time to really speak to any pastor in that church to try and get them to go to pastor out because I personally am really just a small teardrop in the ocean. There's no way to, I, I don't have access to him. And um, even if I try and get access to him through the pastors, the pastors are going to do exactly what they did on my Facebook. They're going to come and attack me. They're not interested in the reason or the logic of why and how I feel the way I feel. They're just interested in the fact that I cannot possibly call Pastor Art racist. It's impossible. And I do find that he's got a lot of bigotry, which is very racially insensitive, which makes it racist. And that is why I, till this day, I will never back down or apologize for calling out a man for racism. That is not going to happen. And that is not the only thing. In 2018, when I stopped going to the church, another comment on, I think it was in May, it was in this month, two years ago, he said that he has a dog, which is called, he calls it Blackie, and it is the black child of the family. All of those very racist, 
nuances that he keeps throwing each year in, year out. Those things are highly offensive, highly racist. And those things make me really feel offended by his words. Is a man a good man of God? I mean, looking at what he's been doing over the 20 years and the fact that I've been going to that church, I cannot deny. There's a lot of things I could never, ever deny Pastor Art of. I'm not saying he's satanic, he's demonic, whatever. I'm saying Pastor Art has a lot of racial bigotry and those things need to be challenged. And the thing is, he consistently stands on the podium and he never acknowledges that about himself. He instead turns around and says, we are the ones who are overly sensitive. The problem is with us. So the victims are the ones that have, that have the problem. The fact that you call my ancestors demons, which is then goes down to mean that I'm a demon because I am an extension of my ancestors, that is, to him, is not an issue. The issue is I'm sensitive. He's, 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 he's not, I mean, you know, I could speak for a while on this issue and I have one issue and one issue only, which is the racism. That is the issue that I have. And then there's a secondary part that has grown and it is not his fault. The, the secondary part, it is the fault of the members of the church and not all the members, but a lot of the members of the church. And these are people that will come out and say that, Whatever he says, they will defend him without really trying to hear what the victim is trying to uh, to speak about. And those things, when you are so effortlessly with all your entire human being, uh, trying to defend a human being, another human, those things are very cult-like behavior. When you refuse to hear what the other person is going through and why they're going through that, all that is important for you is for that person to stop it. And that person needs to realize that they need Jesus because we are not about to speak to Pastor Art. No, we need to speak to you. You are the one that is everything that is wrong. That is very cult-like behavior. It's very simple to Google, research what cult-like behavior is like. And I'm experiencing that a lot. Every time when I need to object to something that Pastor Art is saying, Pastor Art, who, by the way, is human like all of us, he is susceptible to making errors. He is susceptible to making small mistakes here and there. And when we call him out on that, People come out with all their might and glory to defend him. That, my friends, is very cult-like behavior. That behavior where somebody is so strong, so powerful that we cannot challenge him. These are the same reasons why for years some people couldn't even come out against Bill Cosby. Because, I mean, geez, who are you to say that Bill Cosby did those things? Who are you to say that um, R. Kelly did those things or whoever else like when people are so passionate about defending somebody without even trying to hear what the victim is saying, in as much as you are entitled to your opinion, that also reflects on other things. Same way people say, my actions reflect that I'm angry and I'm full of hatred. Yeah, your actions also have a reflection on me. And those are the things that I talk about when I talk about cult like behavior. Same ways you guys can all justify why you think I'm a lost soul and I am um, angry and all of those things. I, your actions too tell me they scream cult-like behavior and I can justify them. Without even justifying them, you guys show up on my wall and you justify my view. And with that being said, um, I will not ever back down from a issue where I feel somebody's being racist, it, irrespective of who the person is. And that is my standpoint. I do not have any issues with Pastor Art, other than the fact that he's got a whole lot of racial bigotry in him. And I will always say that until it is challenged. For a man to stand and liken his dog to black people, and we are supposed to just live with it, and that is okay. And then when you say anything, then the problem is with you. Yeah, um, like I'd rather go down in history as that guy who is full of anger and hatred, if that is your opinion, because I know that is not what I am. I'm just so that guy who is intolerant of racism, no matter how small it is. And the other mistake that we as human beings make is when we speak about hum uh, racism, especially in South Africa, we think racism is extreme. We think racism means somebody has to call you by the K word. We think racism, somebody has to put a dog on you or they have to kill you like in America right now. 
with a cop killed a black person. We think that is the only image of racism, and that is not the only image of racism. Racism comes in very sh many different shapes and forms, and sometimes it comes in very subtle messaging, such as calling people's uh, ancestors demons and calling, um, uh, calling your dog um, the black child of their family. Those subtleties need to be challenged, and I will challenge those things. Even if it means I get kicked out of the church, I will always challenge those sins. And if that makes me a bad person in your books, then hey, you write your book and I'll write my book. And um, so, yeah, this is my response. If Pastor Art wants to respond to this or he's going to ignore this, that's completely on him. But to all the members of um, the CRC church, if you feel offended, I apologize for offending you in as much as I'm just as offended by your pastor and the things that he says about me and it's clear now on my facebook wall it's not just him it's him and his other fellow pastors and congregation that keep offending me and my ancestral beliefs so um as to everything else about who which said which church said that they want the churches to reopen and whatnot i mean yeah it is everything is on paper he wrote the things that he wrote about the meetings that he went to with the president and um i cannot rewrite history it is what happened he was part of that meeting and he wrote it in by himself that he is in this meeting and they are having conversations with the president about reopening the church he wrote that i didn't say he did he, he said that he wrote it so yeah i will leave it there for now and um, I had to do this because now I can't be answering calls for the next five hours, eight hours, 20 hours over this matter. This is my standpoint. If anybody has an issue with that, it's okay. If anybody agrees with that, it's okay. It's social media after all, and it is what it is. Uh, God bless everybody that's here. And uh, may you all have a very safe period up until we are done with this whole thing of COVID and people can get back to their lives.